Good afternoon, everyone.
Yeah. 
তবে জীবর দয়া হয়ে দেয় নিজ সুখা বলে
So yesterday, now my millions of Gangat Pranam in the lotus feet of my Guru Pad Padma, Om Vishnu Pad Sutta Sishmat Bhakti Prakriyan Kishodushma. And the same in the lotus feet of my Siksha Guru, Om Vishnu Pad Nitya Lila Pravishtam Sishmat Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj. So, we discussed about the birth of Krishna, or certainly he was Jasoda Nandan. Partly he was Devaki Shud or Rohan. Devaki or Vasudev. Now, when Krishna took birth, Nanda Baba went to Mathura to pay tax to Kamsa because Kamsa was king of Sushen Pradesh, Mathura also. So he went there, paid the tax, and in the night Vasudev met him and told, Nanda Baba told that, I am happy that you have son in this old age. Then Vasudev told that uh, you should go at once to Braja. Don't delay. Many demons here and there moving. There be anything danger. And then very soon praying Narayan that save my boy coming. When he reached his home, very strange, a demon Putana Sakhi to Mitra to Kans, very powerful, 10,000 elephants power in her. Really, he was like a uluk, owl, very big, very big, very big shape. But by the advice of his sakha kans, he was moving here and there to kill all the boys who are Ten days before they have taken birth or after ten days, within ten days. But you should know where bhakta are glorifying, telling Harikatha each other of Krishna, their food, prayed, pishachini, dakini, and any demon cannot come. Only Krishna wanted to play some sweet pastime, and that is why Jog Maya oh, inspired that Putana to come there in Braja. Otherwise, any demon cannot come. But Putana, Trinavat, Saptasur all came, Agasur, Bakasur. Why? To renew. The love and affection of gopis, Nandvabha, Yasoda and Brajabhashi, to Krishna as a new, new, new one. So, by the inspiration of Yoga Maya, Krishna Icha Shakti, Putana came and in a very beautiful form she came. In the night she came. So, she was so beautiful. Her wrist, come on, was very lean and thin. And so looking that as if any Gandharva, Gandharva has come, or any Lakshmi Saraswati, or anyone has come to see Krishna, 
So she came in a beautiful form and went to directly in the house of Jasoda, where Jasoda and Rohini Mata, they were loving and crossing to Krishna. They saw that very beautiful Devi, they could not uh, check her. She at once came and la 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 la, <laughs> my dear boy, and he took in her lunch. At that time Krishna closed his eyes. Why? Chakrabarti Thakur is telling five reasons. That a boy went in the lap of mother, very happy playing, taking breath. But unknown person comes then by Balli Leela, he closes his eyes. So Krishna is a Balli Leela. Secondly, Tadris Amangal Darshanaya. She was in a very beautiful form, but like man capable yes, In the very beautiful case, very tikshna, sword, sword is there. So, very beautiful form, but to kill Krishna, to give poison, she has come. So, Krishna closed his eyes that I don't want to see a mongol, this lady, because she is coming to kill all the Prajvasis' son. But by the Jogmaya Prabhav, she only directly, when she came to Gokul, he came directly in the Bhavananda Bhavan. He could not go here and there. So he came first there. And she took Krishna in his lap. So Krishna so this is Amangal. I don't, she wants to kill Rudhirasana, Uttana Palkhatani, Rudhirasana. So Krishna oh, closed his eyes. Also, <coughs> if anyone is in front of Krishna, Swain Bhagavan, any maya, any kapatata, hypocrisy. hypocrisy cannot be. It will at once go away. So, so when she will come in front of Krishna and Krishna will see her, then at once his maya, maya will go and she will be blood. And then Mother Jasoda will fear, all Prajivas will fear, close his eyes. And he came in the form of mother uh, and telling, Oh my dear son, my dear lalla lalla lalla. Like mother, Krishna did not want to kill her and to give so much pain to her that she will cry because she has come in the form of mother. And that is why in the end, when I will suck her life and everything and when she will be dying, then she will do restless. That I cannot see. So he. So when she came, oh Lalla, oh, that they are really not your mother, how they can have left you here alone? And she took and gave her this to Krishna then closing her eyes, saw that beast 
poison also and with poison her life. Now she could not keep her maya and she became very big. And she, Krishna holding her breast very tightly with feet and mouth and she was shocking and she oh, became of six, uh, twelve miles long, very big. And she wanted to go to Kans, that my brother can save, she wanted. But Krishna told that, I cannot live up, give up you. If I have come to me and in Praja, how kind I be? Anyhow I will. And thus she sought and with a big form, she fell down. Where fell down? Not any cow, Prajabasi were killed. But only the trees of Kans, Bagisha was there nearby. Garden, very beautiful mango and other things were there. So it was all crushed. <laughs> but Krishna was doing even playing on the breast of all Prajant Bajaji following her and they came nearer and saw that oh he is safe and he still he is playing on her breast. They took it and went to Jasoda and gave it in the lap of Jasoda. And Jasoda called all Brahmins and then with Kali Gar Black cows, urine and gober, mixed and with the tail of cows. They began to get the snark of his ekam and the Brahmins were called, they were reciting mantra and then Lalate Kishamam Arakshetha, like so, all twelve and they did all these things. And then Mother Jasoda began to, she took him and began to reoxidate him and give him. So beautiful, this voice stands. You know that when Bhakta reciting, Singing, dancing, glorifying Hari, any form of Krishna, especially Supreme Lord Krishna, any demon, any Pisachi cannot come. But why is he came? Oh, that Krishna will play. Beautiful pastimes, sweet pastimes. After that, in world, the songs will be sung everywhere. And thus all calamities, sufferings of life, endless pain of life, birth and death life, every thing will go. So for this, the Yogmaya of Krishna oh, inspired them and took them to Braja. Otherwise they cannot. In this way, Krishna doing so many pastimes. Uh, I want to tell you, Puranjan, you know Puranjan, have you heard Puranjan? In Bhagavad fourth canto. Very beautiful and aspiring Bhagavad Katha. Narad told to Prachin Parhi, what is this world? Prem Priyujan can speak about this. You don't know? You? You know all Krishna Katha, but not this one. <laughs> this is a very powerful injection. <laughs> I want that this injection should be given to you and all. Very powerful. Then you should.
Have you read? Ah. In brief, you can tell. Other I, I will have to tell. Better you should. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So Srila Gurudev is ordering us to discuss the story in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is narrated by Sri Narada Muni to King Prachina Barhishat. And this story is an allegorical story called the story of King Puranjana. He was narrating this to King Prachina Barhi and he was narrating to him an allegorical story about another king named Puranjan. So Narada Muni, he came to the palace of this king after instructing the king's sons, who later took to the pure path of Sanatan Dharma, eternal spiritual realization, and they performed severe austerities and they attained pure bhakti and pure Krishna consciousness and they all became perfected, liberated souls. After instructing those sons of King Prachina Barhi, then Narada Muni came to the palace of the king. When he came to that palace, he saw that the king was actually so much absorbed, he was very materially absorbed in doing karma, fruitive activities. Uh, this is the nature of the conditioned soul in this world, that his whole consciousness is absorbed 24 hours daily in doing karma, activities which are directed towards sense gratification only, or in other words, material enjoyment within this world, within this universe, either on higher planets or on this planet. So in this way the king was absorbed in simply the external practices of dharma, but not actually the sanatan dharma, the eternal dharma of the soul. And he was performing many Vedic yajyas, sacrifices. But which type of sacrifices? Animal sacrifices. Because in the Vedas there is prescription for in the former times especially, that occasionally great emperors and kings would perform an animal sacrifice. But this animal sacrifice was performed by very highly qualified brahmanas, and the animal would actually be rejuvenated and be given human form in next life. Uh, but still, this was for the purpose of karma, karma kanda, fruitive activities. And the king was very much absorbed in this way. So he was, uh, his intelligence uh, was lost in this kind of endeavor. And Narada Muni, being the great pure Vaishnava that he is, always traversing the three worlds, always trying to benefit the conditioned souls, Narada Muni, now he came to the palace of the king, wanting to awaken the king to self-realization. So when he came there, oh, the king, dutifully greeted Narada Muni with great respect and gave Narada Muni a very uh, nice seat and worshipped him. And the king, he was not an ordinary person also, even though he was absorbed in all these fruitive activities, he, he himself could understand that this was not good for him. And therefore he prayed to Narada that you please enlighten me so that I can actually understand what is the true goal of life because now my intelligence is lost 
in all of this seeking after the temporary happiness of this material world. So, in answer to this, Sri Narada Muni began to uh, very mercifully instruct the king, teaching him that all the happiness and distress of this world, they have nothing to do with the eternal soul. And he began to describe a story to the king, the story of King Puranjana. So, this name Puranjana means old person, Puranjan. It refers to our soul or the Atma because everyone in this material world which is uh, inhabited by millions and millions of species of life, all the living beings within this material world, they're actually eternal souls who have forgotten their eternal spiritual identities. They're absorbed within the identification with this material body and everything connected with this material body. This is called aham mameti. Aham means I and mama means mine. So this false absorption in the uh, body and the things connected to this body is the very cause, the root cause of the conditioned soul's uh, forgetfulness of his eternal identity. But yet, every soul who is going from one body to another, lifetime after lifetime, they are all be, uh, birthless. Najayate mriyate vakadachin nayam bhutva bhavita vanabhuyaha. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that all the souls within this material world, they without, are without birth. That means they are old. Old meaning even without beginning. And namriyate, they never die. They are eternal. They cannot be harmed by any condition of this material world. But they are identifying with all the passing phases of this material world, birth, death, disease, and old age. So Narada Muni began to describe the story of King Puranjan. So he described that King Puranjan, and there's many names uh, of different places and different personalities given in this very long allegorical narration. And I'm going to try my best to cover the, some of the main points in this narration. So, so, Puranjan had a friend named Avigyata. Uh, Avigyata means the unknown one. So, that unknown one, who is that? That is the eternal friend of every soul within this world who they are not aware of. Uh, within this body, we have our individual soul. Uh, but next to our soul, just like two birds that are sitting together on the branch of a tree, next to our individual soul is our eternal friend. And who is that? The Paramatma, the Supreme Soul, or in other words, Krishna, the expansion of Krishna, who is seated next to us as our very intimate friend, but he's called a vigyata. A vigyata means unknown, because the conditioned soul is absorbed in this world, just like the two birds on the branch of a tree. One, one bird is very busy trying to eat all the fruits on the tree. He doesn't even notice that sitting right next to him on this branch is another very beautiful bird, a very intimate friend of his, but he's not aware of that. But one bird is watching, that friend of his is only watching him. And this bird, he is trying to eat all the fruits on the tree. So King Puranjana had this friend, a vigyata. And he couldn't understand that he had such a friend. But in brief, you should go. Because the story is very long. You'll have to finish. So King Puranjana, he began to search for a suitable place to live and he traveled all over the world. Uh, even after a great deal of traveling, he could not find a place to his liking. So finally he became very morose, very disappointed. This means that the conditioned soul is constantly traveling from body to body of so many species of life within this material world. 
and he doesn't find any of them to be satisfactory, only he's suffering and then dying and again suffering. So King Paranjana, he had unlimited desires for sense enjoyment. Consequently, he traveled all over the world to find a place where all these desires could be fulfilled. And unfortunately, he found a feeling of only insufficiency everywhere. So, once while he was wandering in this way, he saw on the southern side of the Himalayan mountains, there was a place named Bharat Varsha. And we all know that Bharat Varsha means India, that place of spiritual cultivation. That in there, there was a city in Bharat Varsha that had nine gates all about, and it was characterized by all auspicious facilities. So, what is the city of nine gates? This human body that has nine openings within the body, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth, two ear holes, one genital and one anus. This material body is called the city of nine gates in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna also refers to it as such. So now, King uh, uh, Puranjana, after, after wandering, he finally came to the human form of life. And he, received, and he now started to inhabit this city that had nine gates. Oh, that city was surrounded by walls and parks, and within it were towers, canals, windows, and outlets. The houses there were decorated with domes made of gold, silver, and iron. So this is all representing how the body is constructed. The walls of the body are the skin. The hairs on the body are compared to parks. The highest parts of the body, like the nose and the head, are compared to towers. The wrinkles and depressions on different parts of the body are compared to trenches or canals. The eyes are compared to windows. The eyelids are compared to protective gates. The three types of the metal in the city are compared to gold, silver, and iron. What does that represent? The three modes of material nature, passion, goodness, and ignorance. So, in this way, this material body, which is actually compared to a, a bag, full of what? Uh, three, three datu, kuna pe three datu ke, kapa, pitta, vata. Simply mucus, bile, and air, this material body is constructed of. So in this way, now, King Paranjana, the soul, is inhabiting this body. And the floors of the houses in that city were made of sapphire, crystal, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and rubies. Because of the luster of the houses in the capital, the city was compared to the celestial town named Bhogavati. So, the city of the body is called the heart. The heart is the capital. Just as the capital of the state is especially gorgeously filled with very high buildings and lustrous palaces, so the heart of the body is filled with various desires and plans for material enjoyment. So, such plans are sometimes compared to valuable jewels, sapphires, rubies, pearls, emeralds. In this way, the heart becomes the center for all planning for material enjoyment in this life. On the outskirts of that city, there were many beautiful trees and creepers encircling a nice lake. Also surrounding that lake were many groups of birds and bees that were always chanting and humming. So in this way, the body has so many different arrangements for sense gratification. And the soul inhabits the body and now starts to take part in the facilities that are provided by nature for, sen for sense enjoyment. In such an atmosphere, even oh, the branches of the trees that were standing on the banks The branches of the trees that were standing on the bank of the lake received particles of water carried by the spring air from the falls coming down from the icy mountains. Now this refers to material desire to enjoy the five uh, sense objects of this world. Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, Shabda, and Sparsha. That means, that means form, uh, smell, sound, and touch, and taste. And also these rains coming down, like a uh, very beautiful mist coming down from the mountain. This is compared to the desire of the living entity within this material body, especially to enjoy what is called the adiras. That means sex desire, the desire to uh, cohabitate with the opposite sex. So this is the strong pull of the material senses within the body. So in such an atmosphere, 
of this body, even the animals of the forest became non-violent and non-envious like great sages. And consequently, the animals did not attack anyone. Over and above everything was the cooing of the cuckoos. And any passenger passing along the path was invited by that atmosphere to take rest in that nice garden. So here, the children are compared to non-violent animals in family life. But sometimes, however, the wives and the children are called Swajanakya, uh, Swajanakya Dasyu. That means burglars or thieves in the name of kinsmen. Why? Because the man earns his livelihood go under, undergoing great difficulty, great pain and anxiety. And then the, the wife and the children, they come and they say, Oh, my dear father, please give me money. Oh, my dear husband, please give me money. And in this way, he becomes plundered by them. So while wandering here and there in that very wonderful garden, King Paranjana suddenly came in contact with a very beautiful woman who was walking there. And she was without any engagement. She had ten servants with her, and each servant had hundreds of wives accompanying him. So now here, Paranjana is beginning to meet his wife, allegorical wife. And this woman is wandering uh, with ten servants. Who is this? This is the intelligence. In this material body, we have the gross material body and we also have the subtle body made of mind, intelligence and ego. 